So we are beginning on the introduction to chemistry. So chemistry, one of the subjects, it's one of the science subjects that is being taught in secondary. Remember, at a, at a primary level, we learned about science in general. But now, when we are moving from primary now to high school, low secondary school, we are coming now to the, the science that we learned at a primary level has been divided into three subjects into three subjects the one one of them being chemistry another one is physics then we have biology now here we are dealing with chemistry chemistry is one of the sub of the science subjects so the other two we are saying that the other two are biology and physics now the question that we, we, we are asking ourselves is what is chemistry chemistry is the study the structure and properties is the study the structure and properties and composition of matter and the changes that matter undergoes. So we are saying that is the study first of the structures. Now chemistry this is the structures. Now it's first the study of the structures, then the properties of these structures, and finally the composition of the structures of the matter and the changes that matter undergoes. So that's the definition of chemistry, is the study of the structures and properties, the, stru the study of the structure and, sorry, it's the, it's the study of the structure, properties and composition of matter and the changes that matter undergoes. So that's what we are defining as chemistry. Now, the states of matter and its properties mixtures and their methods of their methods of separation and drugs are studied under chemistry so in chemistry we are studying we are studying the states of matter the mixtures and drugs we are studying them under chemistry so the study of chemistry involves carrying out experiments, making observations, analysis, interpretations, and making conclusions. Remember, remember that uh, we are carrying out experiments. We are carrying out experiments. Then we are making observations. From this experiment that we are making, we are, carrying, we are, making, observe, we are making observation. Then we analyze, then interpretation, and finally, we come up with a conclusion from the experiment that we have done, we have carried out, and the observation that we have seen, then we will make there, after, after we analyzing, then we have the interpretation, we interpret, we interpret, interpret, interpret them, then we make conclusion at the end of the, of the experiment that you have carried out. So there are many branches of chemistry, the five main branches are so like in other subjects also chemi in chemistry have branches so there are many branches of chemistry so the five main branches are considered to be first is organic chemistry organic chemistry like now when we'll be proceeding to now to a higher level to undertake a chemistry as a as a course now you'll find out that uh, these branches that we're studying here as, a bra as branches, now we will we, we, we study them as a unit. We we'll study them as a unit. So the first branch is organic chemistry. The second one is inorganic chemistry. The second one is inorganic chemistry. Then you have analytical chemistry. We have physical chemistry. And then finally, we have the biochemistry. So those are the the branches that will be. Those are the branches of chemistry. We say that we have organic chemistry, we have inorganic chemistry, we have analytical chemistry, and then we have physical chemistry, and finally biochemistry. So those are the branches uh, covered in chemistry. So 
like also in primary we cover topics topics covered in primary science which are studied under chemistry include so now we say that uh, in primary we study chemistry as a general as a general we study science as a general we had uh, biology in that science that we studied we have chemistry we had chemistry we also had physics now let's look at the topics that we covered in primary that are now are covered under chemistry topics covered in primary and now they are covered under chemistry so they include properties of matter mixtures and method of separation drugs and pollution so those are the some of the topics that we covered in primary that are under chemistry so first we are seeing that we have mixture and methods of separation mixtures and methods of separation then you have drugs and pollution so those are the some of the topics that we covered in primary under the general science now in here in high school or as secondary in secondary level we are covering them under chemistry so let's look at matter so first we have to define what is matter matter is anything that has mass and occupies space matter is anything anything that has mass has mass and occupies space matter exists in three states matter exists in three states these are solid liquid and gas solid liquid and gas or vapor so those are the three states of matter liquid solid and gas those are the three states of matter and you're saying that matter is anything that occupies space and has mass occupies space and has mass so the three states of matter are interconvertible so we can change solid to liquid and you, and again vice versa liquid back to solid liquid to gas then vice versa again we can change solely to gas and also vice versa so it is possible so that's why you're saying that they are interconvertible so let's look at the properties of matter so remember that we say that matter comprises of solid liquid and uh, those are the states of matter solid liquid and gas now the physical properties of solid so those are the physical that you can just see so solids have different shape have different shape, shape and they are not easily changed so solids have definite mass and volume they have definite shape definite mass and volume now mass is a measure of the amount of matter in a substance and volume is the space occupied by the by the substance so now we are saying that mass is the measure of the amount of matter in a substance and the volume is the space occupied by a substance now the space that now this solid that will is occupying is what we are referring to as the volume and mass is the a measure is the measure of the amount of the matter in a substance now the measure of the amount of the matter in a substance and then let's look at different sizes of so different sizes of the same substance contain different amount of matter so i think different sizes of the same substance different sizes for example let's take a, an example of a stone we have different sizes of stones so we are saying that different sizes of the same because stones are the same so different sizes of the substance contain different amount of matter different amount of matter and therefore have different masses because you can see that when you want to throw a stone you will pick one that is somehow smaller meaning that it has it has a, a small amount of the matter in it so that you can be able to pick then let's let, let's let's uh, compare let's compare a stone that you can throw 
and the one that you are, you, it's used in building, you will see that the one is used in building has a, a, a greater mass or a bigger mass compared to the one that you can just pick and throw. Because, but they have same substance. But now, the size, the size is different. So different sizes of the same substance contain different amount of matter and therefore have different masses. The matter in them, they will, uh, when you compare the size, you will find that the matter in them is different. But now the substance is the same, the same type of the substance, but now the amount. When a solid is put in water, the water level rises. When uh, water is in a glass, let's say, let's say halfway, the water is in a glass halfway, and then you place a stone in that glass, you will realize that there is a rise in the volume of the water. Now, the difference between the, difference between the, new, the, 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 the new volume and the initial volume is what now becomes the volume of this solid. Now becomes the volume of this solid. Because there is a rise, because we have added something inside the, the glass that already had water, but now the volume of it has increased. So when a solid is put in water, the level rises. So the rise, we are saying that the rise in water level represent the volume of the solid represents the volume of the solid so that's the easiest way we can measure the volume of a, of a solid that's the easiest way you can measure the volume of a solid now the physical properties of a li of liquid so liquids have definite mass and volume but take the shape of the container in which in which they are placed due to their ability to flow so many of the liquids you find that many of the liquids they can flow so they have definite shape they, they have sorry they have definite volume and definite mass but uh, they'll take the shape of the container in which they are placed in they take the shape of the container in which they are placed in so that's why we are saying that liquids have definite mass and volume but they take the shape of the container they are placed in they take the shape of the container they are placed in due to the ability to to flow and then uh, the third state of matter is gas now the physical properties of gas that has a definite mass but do not have definite volume or shape definite volume of shape. They can therefore be compressed to occupy small spaces and also expanded. Small spaces and also expanded. An example is a, uh, for example, when you want to inflate a, a, a balloon, you want to inflate a balloon. Remember, balloon is just a, it's just small in size, but now we are So it is just small in size, but now the gases that we are we are we are we are we are, we are inserting inside, uh, it makes it to a small a small space holding a, a volume that is somehow bigger, somehow bigger. So the volume you find that um, for gases they have definite mass only for liquid they have definite mass and volume definite mass and volume and for the solids they have definite mass volume and shape so for the solid they have all the three they have all the three all the three are definite shape mass and volume for liquids it's only two mass and volume and now for for the gas it's only mass so that's the easiest easiest way you can uh, you can understand it. 
that's the easiest way you can understand it. Now let's look at the mixtures. We say that uh, it's one of the topics that we learned at primary level and it's, it's, it's uh, being covered in uh, chemistry. Now, mixture is found either as pure substance or, sorry, matter is found either as pure substances or mixtures. So, matter can either be pure substance or or mixtures or mixtures. Now, a pure substance is one that consists of only one type of matter. It's one that is only composed of only one type of matter. For example, when you just have one type of liquid, that's a pure that's a pure substance. That's a pure substance. That is a pure substance. But now, when we mix different types of liquids, it will now be a mixture. So a mixture consists of two or more. It is either two or more. So it is either two or more. So a mixture consists of two or more substances mixed together and in which the individual component forming the mixture retain their physical and chemical properties. They retain their physical and chemical properties. Now, we are saying that a mixture consists of two or more substances mixed together. And now, in which the individual component forming the mixture, in which the individual component forming the mixture retain their physical properties. They retain their physical and chemical properties. For example, when we mix maize and beans, we find that it is a mixture. But now, the components making up the mixture, they have, they have retained their physical and chemical properties. They have retained their physical and chemical properties. Now, that is a mixture. So a mixture can be separated by physical means. So that's what we have to keep in mind that a mixture can be separated by physical means, such as we knowing, for example, uh, we knowing, for example, you'll find that in most cases after after harvesting of either maize or beans. So, after the harvesting them, then uh, you'll find that uh, uh, when they want to be stored, they want to, after, after the harvesting, they have been, have been dried, then now, We find that we have some some charge. So now, we know will uh, apply in a case where one of the the substance in the mixture is light light than the other, where it can be can be blown away by the wind, can just be blown away by the wind. So in winnowing, we use this method. Uh, using by the aid of, of the wind. Then you have sieving, that's for the liquids, filtering, also for the liquids, evaporation, can either be liquid and the solid, have decanting, liquid and solid, or immiscible, immiscible liquids, and use of magnets. Now, use of magnets, one of the substance must be one that can be can be attracted by the magnet and be attracted by the magnet. So now, the choice of method to separate a given mixture depends on the nature. Depends on the nature. Now, first, the choice that we, 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 we will, uh, we will uh, choose the choice that we will, we will take first depends 
on nature and then second the properties of the individual components forming the mixture individual forming the mixture so uh, which nature is it the nature of the, the substances then the component of the substance making the, the mixture and then the properties of the individual components forming the mixture so so uh, th 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 those ones will determine the type the type the, of, of our separation that we will use this one will guide us on which type we are using now to separate because not 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 each and every not each and every way of separation can be used in uh, separating any any of the mixtures now then we have conductors and conductors so substances which allow electricity substances which allow electro energy to flow through them are conductors so conductors are substances that can allow electrical energy to flow through them those are what we are calling conductors they can allow electrical energy to flow them so then uh, substances which do not allow electricity to flow through them are non-conductors they are now non-conductors now let's look at drug and the drug abuse drug and drug abuse first we have to def define what is a drug first we have to define what is a drug remember so a drug is any substance any substance no you're saying that any substance any substance natural or manufactured so a drug can either be natural or manufactured which when used alters the way the body functions so is any substance natural or manufactured which when used alters the way the body functions or alters the normal body functions so it can be any substance it can be either natural or it can either be manufactured that when taken or when used it alters the normal body functions it alters the normal body function so drugs used to treat diseases in human beings and other animals are known as medicine so all medicines are drug but not all drugs are medicines not all drugs are medicine so the the, the, the medicines that we take are, uh, are drugs but not all drugs are medicine so just a number of drugs are used as medicine but not all med all, all, all drugs are medicine so you see we are saying that the drugs that we use to treat diseases and in human beings and other animals are known as medicine so when one is sick they'll take in drug that is a medicine so you say all medicines are drug but not all drugs are medicine so we are saying that medicines are administered by qualified medical officer in specified amount called doses now we just not we, we do not just take medicine anyhow we have a way specific amount uh, that we have to take them. so we are calling them we are calling so the medical officers in the specific amount called doses now the doses the the, the, the amounts in which we take drugs uh, we take the medicine are called doses now the medicine are just are not just uh, administered by anyone but by only medical officers so in case of anything in case uh, you are feeling unwell you, you don't just to you don't just take any medicine because you are feeling unwell no you, you have to take them via the pres prescription given by a medical officer so the written instruction so after 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 having been given drugs remember we have some instruction that will be given on how to take them so the written instructions by a qualified medical officer giving details on the type of drug 
So first, you have to know the type of the drug. Then second is how the drug should be used. Now we are calling them prescription. So prescription. So the prescription are the instruction by a qualified medical officer giving details on the type of drugs and how the drug should be used. So that the prescription. So as you will be told, um, maybe it is a painkiller and the way you have to take them either two in the morning, two tablets in the evening. So those are the prescriptions. Those are the prescription. So the use of a drug for a purpose other than what it is meant for or use of overdose or underdose of, pres of prescribed drugs constitutes drug abuse. Now, drug abuse is using the drugs for the purpose other than what it, what it is meant for. For the purpose other than what it is meant for. So we are using it in a wrong way. It is either overdose or underdose. So that's what we are referring as drug abuse. Drug abuse. Using a drug for the purpose other than what it's meant for. So it can either be overdose or underdose. So once you are given drug, you have been pres prescriptions by the qualified medical officer that you have to follow. Once you take either more or less of the prescription remember that's a drug abuse that's a drug abuse that's drug abuse so drugs ab dr drug abuse has harmful effects on the state of the health of the use so remember you are either taking too much of what is required or taking too or taking less of what is required of you. And remember, they will have side effects on the user. So the harmful effects include, now these are the, these are the effects that one, one may have. One includes stress, have depression, have hallucination, have addiction, and then dependence. Or it may cause, or it may be fatal. They, uh, we find in other instances that uh, now the effects are, uh, are fatal. So, and, and we have drugs that are commonly abused. Now these drugs are the commonly abused ones. One is tobacco, you have alcohol, you have bang, then you have cut or mira. So we'll find them that uh, these drugs are abused mostly we have tobacco, alcohol, bang, mira. So we say that it is either manufactured or natural. So harmful effect of smoking tobacco include lung cancer and heart failure. So once you start using tobacco, now the, the effects are lung cancer, and heart failure and heart failure then alcohol abuse leads to liver problem misuse of bang leads to mental disorder you find that uh, mm, some mental disorders are due to use misuse of bang are due to misuse of bang so prolonged use of mira or a cut leads to addiction that's the number one. Then number two, dependence. Then vascular disorders. So you'll find that pro pro prolonged use of mira, it will lead to addiction, dependency, and then you have vascular disorders. You have vascular disorders. So just like our other subjects, when you study chemistry, you, you also have the roles of chemistry in the society roles of chemistry in the society now so after after having studied chemistry we also have some advantages that we have some 
advantages thereafter. So roles of chemistry in the society. Also, what does chemistry help in society? Or what does those that have studied it benefit? So we have in chemistry, substances are referred to us. So, so in chemistry, we are referring substances to us, chemicals. And then people who work with chemicals, we are calling them chemists. So chemistry offers various career opportunities in various fields, such as medicine, pharmacy. So for you to undertake these courses like medicine, pharmacy, food technology, education, and engineering, you will have, you need to have uh, knowledge in chemistry. So chemistry has helped to improve standards of living in areas such as so these are the areas that now chemistry has helped in improving the, the, the living standard. One, manufacture of drugs to fight diseases. So we, that's, that, that's as we say that uh, uh, all medicines are drugs. So manufacture of drugs to fight diseases. That's the number one. Number two, food production to fight hunger. Number three, manufacture of cheaper alternative fabrics such as nylon, polyester, and then you have tetron, have manufacture of plastics for roofing, packaging, and domestic use, manufacture of detergents, then production of fuels for transport and domestic use. Now this is, this includes alternative fuels to reduce global pollution as well as to supplement the fossil fuel. Remember the fuel that you use, it burns, then uh, uh, it pollutes the environment. But now, we are saying that uh, it has helped in uh, getting alternative fuels to reduce global pollution. Getting alternative fuels to reduce global, global pollution. Now, after having looked at that, at the drugs and the roles of chemists in the society, Let's look at now the chemistry laboratory. The chemistry laboratory. Remember, as we had said that chemistry, we are dealing with experiment. We deal with experiments. We we'll then go further to observe, to analyze, interpret, interpret. Then now finally we make conclusions. Now, our experiments we carry them out in laboratory. And uh, when carrying out this 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 uh, experiments, remember we are using we are using uh, apparatus. So we have to dwell conversant with the apparatus that we are using. Have to dwell conversant with them. So a laboratory is a building. It's a building. So a laboratory is a building or special room where chemicals special room where chemicals and apparatus are kept in which practical subjects such as chemistry are studied are studied so we are, we are saying that laboratory is a building a building or a special room can either be a building or just a special room where chemical and apparatus are kept. So first, it is a room or a building where the chemicals and the apparatus are kept and in which practical subjects such as chemistry are studied. In which practical subjects such as chemistry are studied. So now, in case of any experiment, we carry them out in a laboratory. Carry them in a laboratory. So, laboratory has some safety, has some rules. Like, uh, just in any given family or any given home, we have rules that run uh, run, run the home, which are different from other 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 other, other homes. So, also. Uh, in chemistry, in the laboratory, you have rules that you have to follow. So, for the smooth running of the experiments while in the laboratory.
So safety rules, safety in the laboratory. For since learning, chemistry emphasizes on practical. Remember, say that it will, uh, we, we, we have some experiments that we carry out in chemistry. So since learning chemistry emphasizes on practical work, it is necessary that certain rules are followed to ensure safety in the chemistry laboratory. Now, as, as we are carrying out this experiment, you also have to be safe. Remember, some of the chemicals are flammable, so we have to have some safety rules. So, other than having those rules, but we have accidents, we have accidents. So, the two common causes of accidents in the laboratory are ignorance and carelessness. So, we just ignore, we will find that there are some ignorances uh, to those carrying out the experiment and carelessness, so it will cause accidents. So, the cause of the accidents, most common causes are ignorance and carelessness. So, accidents are minimized when safety rules are followed. So, those are some of the, those are the common, common, common causes of accidents in the laboratory. We have ignorance and carelessness. We just ignore some things, then uh, we are just careless of, of other things. So we have rules that we have to follow for, for us to minimize accidents. So the following are the rules that we have to follow. All chemicals with environmental and health impacts must be stored in when labeled containers with appropriate safety warning symbol clearly visible. So, so when when you buy anything that is packed, um, when you buy anything that is packed, you will you, 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 uh, you realize that we have we have some rules on how to use them, and then warnings on what not to do warning on what not to do. So we are saying that all chemicals with the environmental and health impacts must be stored. So this 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 is a must thing that has to be done in a laboratory. So we we'll find that all chemicals with the environmental and health impact must be stored in a well labeled containers with appropriate safety warning symbols clearly visible. So they they have to be visible. So laboratory rules, laboratory safety rules, number one, never run in the laboratory because you may trip, fall, and injure yourself or other users of the laboratory. So in the laboratory, you have just to walk slowly while doing everything in the laboratory. Just walk slowly, no running in the laboratory. Number two, never test or eat anything in the laboratory to avoid poison. Remember, now in the laboratory we are carrying out experiment. We are not testing. We don't test using the tongue. We don't test using the tongue. So never test or eat anything in the laboratory to avoid poison. Then number three, always consult your teacher before trying any experiment to avoid accident. So you can just ignore and say that ah this has no effect, but what you do, always consult. So label all the chemicals you are using to avoid confusion. We label all the chemicals you are using to avoid confusion. Always use a clean spatula for scooping a substance from, um, from a container to prevent contamination. Remember now, the spat when uh, once uh, a spatula is used, then uh, you forget to, to wash it. Remember the chemicals, there are remains of the same cold chemicals that we had used earlier before. Then again, when you are using the same spatula to scoop substances from a container, another substance now it becomes contaminated. So remember always to use a clean spatula. Now, number six, always hold test tube or boiling tube using a test tube holder when heating to avoid being burned. Now, while heating, remember always to use, while uh, heating, remember always to use a, a 
our when heating either using a boiling tube or a test tube remember always to use a test tube holder a test tube holder to avoid being burned remember as you are heating this uh this apparatus is gaining some heat and it is and as the time goes by, it's becoming hotter and hotter. So when heating a substance in a test tube or a boiling tube, never let the open end face you or anybody else. Because the liquid, the liquid may spat out and cause injury. The liquid may spat out and cause injury. Remember now when you are heating the anything in a test tube or a boiling tube, the, 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 the open end doesn't have to face anyone. Remember some chemicals will spat out as they are, they are heating. So you don't have, the, 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 the open end has not to face anyone. Never look directly into flasks and test tubes where reaction are taking place because the chemical may spat also into your eyes and cause injuries. Now, you don't look, look directly into them don't look directly into the apparatus where reactions are taking place never smell never smell gas directly instead waft the gas towards your nose with your hand waft the gas towards your nose with your hand now experiments in which poisonous in which poisonous gases are produced must be carried out in fume, cupboard, or outdoor. So we have some, uh, we have some experiments. We have some experiments that are uh, they cannot be carried out in a. So we are saying that the experiments in which poisonous. So we have some some uh, experiments where there is a production of some poisonous gases. So we are saying that. Such they have to be carried out either in fume cupboard or outdoors. Or outdoors. So always keep flammable substances away. Keep always flammable substances away because they easily catch fire. Because they easily catch fire. Because they easily catch fire. So Always keep flammable substances away from flames because they easily catch fire. So you'll find that uh, this they'll be labeled flammable. All substances that you know that they have been labeled flammable, always keep them far away from fire because they easily catch the fire. Report any accident to the teacher or the lab laboratory technician immediately for necessary action. You'll find that something has happened now. The students have become afraid to tell the teacher, but you have to tell the teacher or the laboratory technician so that the necessary action can be taken. Necessary action can be taken. In case of a serious rock accident such as fire, calmly walk out, do not scramble for the exit. Doing so will hinder easy escape. Now, for example, in case of fire and then everybody is running up and down, you'll find that it will hinder easy escape. It will hinder easy escape because you, you, all everybody is scrambling for the exit. Everybody is scrambling for the exit. But when you calmly walk out of it, you'll find that you will find out that all the students or all those lab users will find their way out. And harm. Always extinguish flames that are not in use to avoid accidents. Always exit flames. Always always extinguish flames that are not in use. Always extinguish flames that are yet not in use to avoid accident and minimize fuel wastage. For example, now after I have used a flame, remember to put it off. Remember it is using the fuel. So one thing we are also avoiding minimizing wastage.
and also we are avoiding accidents. We are also avoiding accidents. So always after using a plane, you have to put it. You have to extinguish it. If a chemical gets on your skin or on your, in your mouth, rinse with a lot of rinse it immediately with a lot of clean water. So you have to rinse once uh, your skin comes into contact with chemical, rinse it immediately with a lot of water. Not just water, but clean water. Chemicals already used must always be disposed of safely to avoid contamination. So after using any chemical, dispose it off safely to avoid contamination. Once they come into contact with the one that has not been used, remember now, we are now contaminating them and that's a waste. So always work on a clean bench, clean all the pieces of operators used and store them at the end of each experiment. Remember, after every, exper after every experiment, or before any experiment, remember, remember to clean the bench that you want to use. All the pieces of apparatus after using now you have to clean them and also clean the bench to leave them clean now then uh, then store the apparatus after every each experiment so you found them clean also keep them clean so those are some of the rules that uh, we have to follow while in the laboratory now as we are in the laboratory, remember we are using apparatus. Remember we are using apparatus as we are in the laboratory. So those, labor those apparatus have to be used, have, have to be washed after every experiment so that as we have used them today, there is someone else who will want to use them after you've, you've carried out your experiment and also has to find them